Your Dumont television dealer presents... The Maury Amsterdam Show with Maury Amsterdam, Art Carney, Jacqueline Suzanne, Johnny Guarneri as piano and his orchestra, and our special guests, Vic Damone and Mary Ray and Naldi. You'll see this ad in magazines and newspapers. It tells about the Dumont Colony Teleset. But really, to appreciate the true quality of a Dumont, go to your nearest Dumont television dealer and look at his selection of Dumonts. Compare. Compare picture size, brilliance, clarity. Compare tone quality. Compare cabinet design. Here's the Dumont Colony. It's one of the superb television receivers made by Dumont, originator of large direct view television, and manufacturer of the television receiver that owners point to with pride when they say, I own a Dumont. Well, this model, the Colony, is beautiful in design and unsurpassed in performance. Its clear, true picture shows on a 116 square inch screen. As television spreads throughout America, you'll spot the families that know, the families who insist on only the finest in everything. You'll spot them because they own a Dumont. Ladies and gentlemen, now we present the young man you've all been waiting to meet. That young gag man about town, your host for tonight, Maury Amsterdam! Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Silver Swan Cafe. And Don, thank you, Don Russell, it is for the nice introduction. It's quite unnecessary. You've all no doubt seen me wrestle under the name of Mr. America. <laughs> Ah, oh, what a night. This is opening night here in the Silver Swan, and I'm so tickled it makes you feel it when you see people sitting here at such a false and bust. Oh. What'd he say? Wow. What'd he say? Oh, it's been one. I'm so enthused, and I feel so great. We just came back from Florida. Tell us about it. I will, and he did. My wife and I went down, and there's my mother-in-law and our son. I steered. My mother-in-law drove. <laughs> Had a wonderful time. Had a wonderful, wonderful time. And believe me, everybody talks about big expenses. Pay no attention. The whole thing cost us $400. A day. <laughs> oh, those prices. I walked into the hotel. I went up to the clerk. I said, have you got something nice and restful for $10? He gave me an aspirin. <laughs> oh, they've even got an orchestra in the lobby to drown out the complaints. I'm telling you, I have never seen the way they do things in such grand style down there. I saw a flea walking down the street with six dogs on him. <laughs> Everything is done so big. And of course, the hotel rooms. I went in, I signed the register. The manager was very nice. He gave me a room, very homey. We have little signs over the bed. To sleep here and the angels watch over you. A couple of them bit me. <laughs> well, I should have expected it when I signed the register just as the ink was drying, a cockroach walked over my name. It's not bad enough to find him in bed, they come down to see what room you're in. <laughs> and then, I went out on the beach, this is the truth, I went out on the beach and everybody is out there. You stay out all day and they talk about suntans, you walk away one big beautiful blister. <laughs> that sun, that sun is so powerful, I was laying down there on the sand, 20 minutes I was all brown. A kid dropped a chocolate ice cream cone on my kisser. <laughs> and you should see those bathing suits the girls almost have on. The new bathing suits. Two bandanas and a prayer. <laughs> this one girl had on a suit, it was kind of a, well she had uh, around, uh, uh, you know I think she left at home. <laughs> Well, folks, here it is. Here's the song that, well, they've been playing it on the radio night and day. That's why everybody's buying television. <laughs> Dumont, of course. <laughs> when you come to the chorus of this song, I want you to all feel that this is the time for you to follow the singer. That's why we're going to follow. <laughs> <laughs> What'd he say? <laughs> yucka puck. Yucka puck. Yucka puck. Yucka puck. Yucka puck. Gee, Dad, he dances, too. <laughs> My uncle works at the circus, and I don't think he's very deft. The other day, a lion bit off his head. Now he's only got one head left. <laughs> yucka puck, yucka puck, yucka puck, yucka puck, yucka puck. Everybody, yucka puck, 
Yakapok, everybody. Yakapok, Yakapok. That's the idea. Want everybody to sing. And we have some lovely gifts tonight for the best singers here. For the men, especially the athletic type, something I think you're really going to appreciate. The best man singer tonight, we're sending two dumbbells. Their names are Sadie and Mildred. <laughs> oh, and what a prize for the women. Girls, you'll love this. A little something made special by one of America's most famous dressmakers. It's a new kind of a, uh, well, it's a... Uh, yeah, it's a dress that's made out of chicken feathers. <laughs> With schmaltz buttons, you'll love them. <laughs> Wait, oh, these chicken feather dresses. Are, oh, they, you put them on, are you tickled? <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I took my girl to a party. We played hide and seek. All of a sudden, the lights went out. My case comes up next week. <laughs> yucka buck, yucka buck, yucka buck, yucka buck, yucka buck. Everybody, yucka buck, yucka buck, yucka buck, yucka buck, yucka. Doctor, doctor, I'm so nervous. This is my first operation. I know just how you feel. You're my first patient. Yucka. <laughs> This is only the beginning of the show, folks. It's, it's, as I told you, opening night at the Silver Swan, and we want you to make it your home. We want you to feel whenever you're in the mood for a good time, no minimum, no cover charge, just a lot of good fun. And we want you to join in. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Newton, our best waiter. I like it. Newton and I have been pals for years. Is that right? That's right. As a matter of fact, we're kind of distantly related. You see, Newton's mother and my mother are mothers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you look real sharp. Oh, What's you look real sharp too, kid. But I'm telling you, every day you get to look more like Gabby Hayes. Well, thank you. <laughs> Hey, Newton, you didn't tell me what's new, Newton. Nothing. Nothing, huh? How'd you brother Nathan, Newton? I don't know. He's narrating. He's narrating. Hey, what's what's the 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 yeah. Yeah. Gee, you look so swell. I can't get yeah. over it. You look like, oh, I love this outfit. This is what you like. You like this? Beautiful. Well, I'm telling you, somebody must have dicked this dippy in cement. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I think you look great. You're so happy tonight. Uh, why, why should I be happy? You know what I happened? don't know. What, what happened? happened this afternoon? Yes. I'm waiting. Girl collected on her old age pension. <laughs> Your girl collected on her old age pension? That's right. Ah, oh, come on, Newton. She can't be that old. I don't know. She got awful big wrinkles under her eyes. So what? A lot of women got wrinkles under the eyes. All the way down to the ankles? <laughs> Sheesh. <laughs> she must be thumbed down. Oh, I'm telling you what. I got a picture over here someplace. Wait you a have to show it to me? Wait a minute. I'm forced to. <laughs> In the contract, huh? huh? Yuck a pup. Uh, My girl's got a face like a duck. Uh, <laughs> there it is. Ah, oh, this I got That's, uh, that's a picture of her standing next to a new Dumont television set. Hey, looks nice. Looks yeah. Very nice, yeah. yeah. Boy, get that shape, huh? Ba -ba -ba -boom. <laughs> yeah, very nice shape. Yeah. Nice shape. And your girl? No, on the television set. <laughs> looks nice. How do you like that mahogany finish, too, huh? Yeah, on the television set. No, on my girl. <laughs> hey, that's a very unusual shawl she's wearing. I like the way it, it hangs down around her shoulders. Shawl? Yeah. That's so shawl that there is. <laughs> <laughs> Those are really ears. Yeah, well, you ought to see how she swims, boy. Yeah? No hands. <laughs> Jolly, look, put the picture of your girl away. I want you to do something special. This is our opening night here at the Silver Swan. You yeah. got something very talented boy, Newton. You mean there's uh, something like a few imitations to give it a lift, like I said in the <laughs> Then give us a look. <laughs> sure. I love that mustache. It has a very bomb is that you guys when it comes down to the fun. <laughs> What'd he say? <laughs> what are you going to do to boost the show along? How about some imitations? Oh, not those stale bird imitations you used to oh, do. Oh, Dickens, no. Uh -huh. <laughs> Dickens, no? Those were silly, I think. That's yeah. right. Redick. Positive. What do, you, <laughs> what do you got? What kind of imitations are you going to uh, regale the folks with tonight? Trees. <laughs> <laughs> imitations of trees? That's right. Oh, you're beginning to branch out, huh? <laughs> You get that branch out, tree? <laughs> you know, sometimes you get very frantic. <laughs> get this first one, are you listen? Tree imitation. All right. All right, I'm ready. Go ahead. Where's my clean? Where's my wait, clean? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What kind of a tree is that? That's a weeping willow. <laughs> Here's the next one. Get this one. Listen closely. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, 
I know, I know. Catnip. No, no. Pussy Willow. <laughs> Here's another one that comes very These quick. These are great. You know that, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Don't let me I leave. I think you got nothing here. Thank oh. you. <laughs> don't let me leave until I go do my specialty now, will you? I wouldn't All dare. Right. This is a female tree calling to its mate. Wait a minute. You mean there's such a thing as boy and girl trees? Nobody ever told you about the birds and bees? Sure, I know all about the birds and the bees. Well, the trees are in on that racket, too, you know. <laughs> this is a female tree calling to its mate. Let's... Tom! Tree. Tom McCann! Tom McCann! Wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you mean, a female tree calling to its mate? Tom McCann, what is that? That's a shoe tree. Oh, <laughs> Folks here want good service. That's the boy not to call on. <laughs> we, we have a wonderful, wonderful act to start our show off with tonight, ladies and gentlemen. They happen to be my own favorite dance team. I've seen dance teams all over the country, and I'm not just saying it because they're here, but I'm really, really crazy about their work. I know you'll agree with me when you meet the very wonderful Mary Ray and Naldi. <laughs> guy had got muscles in his eyebrows. <laughs> oh, I got muscles too, but I left them home in the other suit. You know, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you a little something. We have uh, a very, very nice Cigar. young gentleman Cigarette. that I want you to meet. Cigar. There's the guy. Cigarette. Cigarette. Oh, Jackie, come here a second. Folks, I want you to meet Jackie. 
Jackie is, uh, uh, well, you see, she's a, a girl. And uh, Jackie is, sells the cigarettes here and everything, and, and uh, what's the matter? Aren't you glad to see me? Well, I would be if I knew who you were. What a brush. <laughs> what do you mean, if you knew who I was? You'd seen my picture in the papers. I just came back from Florida. Oh, of course. You're that fellow who worked for a bank. Yeah, and I took your money. To... Uh, Wait a minute. <laughs> I am not no, the fellow who worked for I'm a bank. I'm only kidding, Maury. Of course I remember you. And it's good to see you're back. Yeah, I say it. Good to see you're back, too. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Maury, I uh, brought, made you a little present. Ah, oh, you shouldn't have done it. <laughs> What'd you make? Here, try it. Chocolate-covered walnut. Oh, gee, Dad, I'm crazy about these. Uh -huh. <laughs> Chocolate-covered walnuts. You sure these walnuts in here are fresh? Of course they're fresh. I didn't even take them out of a shell. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, a lump. Incidentally, how's the, uh, how's the cigar and cigarette business going? Oh, just wonderful. Yeah? A man over there bought a hundred cigars. No kidding. Yeah, his wife just had twins, and he bought 50 for each twin. I think that's wonderful. Too bad for you his wife didn't have triplets, huh? Oh, no, she couldn't have had. She couldn't? Why not? Because I ran out of cigars. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I think that's nothing. Tell me, uh, tell me, Jackie, where you been lately? I oh, haven't seen you. Round? <laughs> well, I've been working for an artist. Yeah, what you been doing? Uh, every day I went up to his studio and I posed for five hours a day sitting on a white horse. He calls the picture Lady Godiva. Huh? <laughs> You're posing on a white horse, he calls the picture Lady Godiva? Hey, how'd you look in the picture? Oh, he didn't paint me, he just painted the horse. Well, why did he have you sitting there? Well, he had to have somebody to talk to. <laughs> so what else is new? What else is new? Oh, yes. The other day I went to my first baseball game. Well, bully for you. <laughs> How'd you like it? Oh, it was dreadful. What do you mean dreadful? Everybody likes baseball. No. Sure. Sorry, it's the silliest thing I've ever seen. Imagine grown men running around in long stockings and little short pants from beanbag to beanbag trying to hit a poor no, little no, defenseless no. ball. You don't get the idea. You see, the fella throws... Oh, no. And, and every then... there was one man who stood there, and every time a ball was thrown at him, he tried to hit it with a big stick. That was a bat. A bat? Yeah. Well, I didn't see any wings on it. But they must oh, have had a... No. Listen, oh, a bat. They had, thinking of the kind Oh, no, no. They had a very guilty conscience because every time they hit this poor little ball, yes. they drop the stick and then they'd start running. Well, you see, they make a hit. A hit? Well, they certainly didn't make a hit with me. No, no, But the no. worst one of all, he was a big man. He wore a mask and he had long pants. And every time he saw hit the ball, if they didn't hit it, then suddenly he would yell, Strike! Strike! <laughs> yeah. A strong union, yeah. Yeah, imagine trying to start a strike in the middle of the game. That's just simply awful. And then they'd go on, and they'd hit it again, and then he'd yell, foul ball, foul ball. Foul ball, foul ball. Yeah. Foul ball. Yeah. This is bad enough to hit this poor little defender. Yeah, oh, when you call it names, it's yeah, simply awful. awful. And I was sitting there in my best pajamas, well, look, looking like a doll, in my best loose pajamas. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You went to a baseball game in your pajamas? Of course, silly. It was a night game. Oh. And it was a night game. It was a night game. Oh, that Jackie, there's the girl's got brains she hasn't even used yet. <laughs> Some doll, the other day she followed a street sprinkler down the street for four blocks to tell the man his wagon was leaking. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very dear friend of mine sitting over here, came in especially for our grand opening of the Silver Swan Cafe. He's a fellow I've practically watched grow up in the entertainment business. We've been pals for a long time. He's the, at present rather, he is the star of the Pet Milk Show on the Coast to Coast Network. He also makes phonograph records, and they're right up there among the top sellers. And deservedly so, because he's not only a wonderful artist, and I mean this sincerely, one of the nicest guys I know. Ladies and gentlemen, my pal, Vic Damone. My arms full 
about you You know Darling Why So in love With you am I In love With an night Mysterious The night When you first were there in love with my joy delirious when I knew that you could care Desert me I'm yours Till I die So in love So in love So With you, my love, am I? Wonderful, Vic. Take the ball, ladies and gentlemen. Incidentally, Vic is opening over at Bill Miller's Riviera. Uh, what's that date, Vic? The 28th. 28th of this month, huh? April. You'll be a smash over there. Thank You'll be you. a very big hit. Just mention my name. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Vic's put you in the mood for good music, so here's where I ruin everything. Just get tuned up, fellas. <laughs> Peanut, chocolate, candy, a prize in every package. Stolen refrigerators. Get them while they're hot. I have bought it now, but I've had a part of it. You've heard of Evelyn and her magic violin? Meet Maury and his miserable cello. <laughs> I come to you tonight through the courtesy of Tipping Topper's Tip Top to Pay Pay. Fall do you suffer from flying to pay? When a man in back of you sneezes, does a man in front of you automatically wear your head? <laughs> what you need is a good paste and a hair. <laughs> he has a pot. <laughs> Poem. If a cat has little kittens and a dog has little pups and a hen has little chickens, so how come my girl has such big feet? <laughs> Any other number you'd like to? <laughs> Give up? <laughs> And now for the music lovers, a little something I decompose myself. <laughs> Entitled, When Mrs. Moore Begins to Snore, She Blows the Blankets All Over the Floor. <laughs> From the picture, The Falcon Stabs Bulldog Drummond. <laughs> Whatever happened to Rubinoff? Charlie, take that away from me, you lad. How do you like the music, Charlie? Oh, terrific. Go Charlie, that's your maiden name, Newton. That's your new name. Right. <laughs> Charlie, you like the classical yeah, music? Yeah, I like it. I like it. Oh, good. What, uh, what do you? Uh, what do you think about uh, the, the old masters? You oh, like their I like work? Them. Yeah, yeah I like, I'm pretty deep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> tell me something. Uh, who do you think is responsible for Beethoven's fifth? Mrs. Beethoven. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of nice people sitting in our audience I'd like you to meet. Decided to pay us a little visit tonight, and we're very happy to have them with us. First of all, a gentleman whose column you read daily, 
in our top newspapers throughout the country. He's the saloon editor of the New York Post, my friend Earl Wilson. Earl, will you take a bow? Thank you, Earl. Thank you. And uh, with Earl, his B.W., his beautiful wife, Mrs. Wilson. Mrs. Wilson. I see it, oh, I see it over here, my very good friend, the wine tycoon, Peppy Wiener. Enjoy your problems. Don't stand up, that's enough. <laughs> And let's see who have we over here, one of uh, New York City's most popular judges, and incidentally happens to be a cousin of mine, Bertie Amsterdam. Would you take a bow? I see my doctor is here, but I better not introduce him. It'll cost me money. <laughs> Seated over here, my B.W., my beautiful wife. Darling, would you take a bow? When, when we first got married, she started to cook for me, you know, out of a cookbook, and I walked in one day, and I started turning the pages, and all of a sudden, she got so mad. She says, there, you went and lost my place, now I don't know what I'm cooking. <laughs> there, I almost forgot we have a play here. I don't know if we're going to have time to do it on tonight's uh, uh, show here, but it was written by Newton, our waiter, and you know how the union is. Says here, uh, Newton, our waiter, it sounds a little silly, but uh, argue with the waiter's union. Get this. The title, Life on a Banana Plantation or Back with the Old Bunch. Mm. <laughs> well, first of all, we have to have a hero. Hey, Vic, you think you can be a hero? Why, sure. Mm -hmm. Well, don't overdo it, Jen. <laughs> Just go out and rest your muscles. Go ahead, pick up a script out there someplace and come back. Now, now we have to have the, uh, the heroine. Let's see, let's see the heroine. Johnny, a little mood music first, then we'll bring her out. That's right. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I said mood, not... Come on, heroine. This is our heroine. Go ahead and heroine it up. All right, there you are. My name is Gretchen Pennyfeather, and this is my baby Humphrey. <laughs> <laughs> we are all alone in this log cabin. Poor little Hump. He is hungry. I must feed him. <coughs> Powdered milk. <laughs> Outside, a storm is raging. BRR, it is cold. BRR. <laughs> it's so cold, my red flowers are turning blue. <laughs> <laughs> me thinks it is that dastardly villain, Titus Flintheart. Yeah, that's me. Look, I've come to foreclose on the mortgage. You can't foreclose on the mortgage. Why not? Because you can't even pronounce it. <laughs> What are you worried about? Outside the air has a Merry Christmas. A Merry Christmas? Yes, and a Happy New Year. How are you? Uh, and a Merry Christmas acquaintance. Me, you forgot this is some play you wrote here, kid. <laughs> Marry me and we will live in a beautiful home where every morning we can turn to the next page. <laughs> oh, if only my hero Snodgrass were here, he would save me. Hark, I hear his footsteps. I am. I have covered last, yeah, all the way from Hialeah. All the way from Hialeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Ah, yes. Ah, it is my Some darling. I'll make you run out and come back. <laughs> ah, it is my darling Snodgrass. Ah, Gretch. Ah, Snod. <laughs> ah, nuts. Darling, I have been riding horseback for three days, and my feet are all wore out. You see? <laughs> uh, yeah, I got, I got a mighty low horse. <laughs> now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Marry me, and I will shower you with riches and diamonds. And what we will do now is sing our love song, all right? And what's that? It goes, keep on looking for Friends, go to your nearest Dumont television dealer tomorrow. Look at the Dumont models he has on display. Choose the one which will fit best your own home decorating scheme. Then relax and get full enjoyment of the finest in television with your own Dumont. The Maury Amsterdam show is produced by Mr. Amsterdam. It's directed by David T. Lewis. Settings by Russell Patterson. Production supervised by Frank Bonetta. Join us next week at this time when your Dumont television dealer will again present the Maury Amsterdam show. This is Don Russell speaking, reminding you that Dumont is first with the finest in television. This is the Dumont Television Network.